have you ever wanted to visualize your file system in a really inconvenient manner? Possibly even worse than something like Eagle Mode, which we looked at a couple of months back. But you want to feel like a super elite movie hacker. Well, luckily for you, I have the exact app. This is an application inspired by FSN, which if you've watched Jurassic Park and you know about the It's a Unix system scene, you would have seen. This is FSV2, File System Visualizer, which is the perfect name for it, and it's the GTK2 version. Now, you might be thinking, Brody, why are we looking at a GTK2 app? Well, it hasn't been updated in about 10 years, and this is my channel, so I'm going to do what I want. And because it hasn't been updated in a while, it can get a little bit, uh, a little bit seg faulty. During my testing, it probably crashed at least 10 times. So hopefully during the recording, it's going to be fine, but I don't think it will. So if we go and click on one of the folders in here, it's going to give us this nice little animation of zooming into it. And this will happen for every single folder inside of that folder as well. So if we go and open up the folder over here, we'll notice there's a bunch of little folders here. So let's go and click on this one here. And it's going to zoom into that one. And it will keep doing that down to the individual file level. Instead of expanding the folder in the list over on the left-hand side, you can also go and expand the folder in the visualization. So right-clicking on any of the folders in here is going to give us the option to expand, expand all, look at, and then see its properties. Let's go to expand all, and that will go and open up everything inside of the folder down to the individual files. So let's go and click on, say, this file over here, and this one seems to be some sort of textbook, I guess. Uh, yes, I guess it's for my Android development course. Now, one thing this was desperately missing is some way to easily move around the visualization. You would think you'd be able to, like, middle mouse and drag around, or maybe you could, like, shift right click or shift left click or something like that. But no, you don't actually have that option. Basically, your only option is to use middle mouse click to zoom in and out and click on folders. So if you want to go and say, let's say we're focused on this one right here. If you want to go and click on, let's zoom in more. If you want to click on the folder that was down here, you'd have to zoom out, click on it, and then you can go to it. It was never a good interaction method, but hey, it, it does the job, I guess. And when a folder is not expanded, it will tell you the contents of that folder that you've got selected inside of the list on the left-hand side here. So right now, there are two folders here. If I go and expand that, now we can actually go and select them and jump directly to them. To jump directly to them from this list, make sure you go and double-click, not a single click. So all of this visualization stuff is a really weird interaction method, but it should probably explain what some of the buttons over on the left-hand side do. So nothing in this application has a tooltip. If you don't know what it does, basically just guess until you get it working. There's also not really good documentation for this either, so you're pretty much on your own. So the first button on the left is the undo button. This is going to undo any folder selection action. So if we go and press this now, it'll take us up to our second year folder. Pressing that again is going to take us over to the folder we were in previously. That was in the third year folder. So on and so forth until you run out of actions to do. And you might notice it doesn't undo any of the folder expanding options, just the actions of going between the folders. Then the second button is going to jump up to the local root folder. This is the folder you've selected as your current visualization. In my case, that is my documents folder. Speaking of the root folder, if you go and close any of the higher level folders, it will show you an animation of all of the folders inside of that folder going and closing as well. And I think that's really cool. The third button we have will take us up to the parent directory. So in this case, we are focused on video notes. Pressing that button will take us up to logsec. Pressing that again will take us all the way back up to our documents folder. That animation actually takes a really long time, doesn't it? And you've probably noticed that normally we see everything from this angle. The final button will put us into eagle mode. Not that weird application we saw before, but basically a top-down view of whatever we currently have selected. This doesn't take into account, one, the size of the screen, two, the size of the folder itself. So if we go and do this on video notes, for example, it's actually going to zoom us all the way out 
to the highest level, so it's really difficult to see what's actually going on with that folder. So far, everything we've done has been from this single local directory. This can very easily be changed if we go up to File, click on Change Root, or press Control N. We can go and change this to wherever else we want. Let's go and say in my home directory, inside of my videos directory, just something that's easy to load, and press that. It's going to go and reload everything. Once that's done, then it will show you the visualization actually loading up. And I realized I didn't show you that when the video first started. Right now, the colors are pretty boring. The only thing that is colored are the individual files. And I wanted to show you that you can go and modify the colors, but I can't exactly do that. So right now, the colors are being done based on the node type. There is also coloring based on the timestamp and based on wildcards. These wildcards you can set up for yourself. Node type, though, is the default mode, and if you try to change the color here, the application seg faults every single time. And that's going to be true for configuring any of the colors. If we try to do the same thing over in the date and time mode, selecting color here will also seg fault the application. So no touching colors, leave them as they are. So far, everything we've done has been in map view, and map view looks great. But map view is not the super elite hacker mode, that is tree view. So clicking on viz, clicking on tree v for tree view, we get this absolute abomination. And that lag isn't on your system. That does it every single time I try to move. Which doesn't make sense because my system is way more powerful than what would have been available when GTK2 was a thing. GTK2 was never made to render 3D models. And because of that, it can get a little bit crazy when you try to load a lot of them. But the idea here is folders that exist inside of your current folder are going to be opened up as connections along the tree. I'll see if I can actually show you any that don't get hidden by the rest of the background. Okay, so this is the art folder. If I go and open up the video background folder, you're going to notice that gets opened up behind this folder, basically in this connection sort of fashion. And then if I go and open up this folder here, and let's say this folder here, we can actually have multiple connections coming off a single node, because it is a tree. But besides that, all of the interaction I showed you over in the map view or the map visualization, whatever you want to call it, works basically the same way inside of tree view. I find it's a little bit harder to click on things just because there's not really a convenient way to move around. Plus the lag is a little bit crazy. I feel like the reason the towers are so ridiculously tall is because back when this application was first made, it wasn't really normal to have a folder with 100 gigabytes in it. Now it isn't super common, but it can happen, especially when you're working with HD video and you're working with a lot of it, like I am in my case. So we get these ridiculous towers that basically break the application. Before I go, there's one thing I never brought up. File opening. Because this is just a file system visualizer, not a file manager. So you can see how big folders are in relation to other folders, what's inside of those folders. But if you want to use this to, like, you know, rename files, delete folders, move folders around, that isn't what this application does. It just is a visualizer. Now, the ultimate question of the day is, should you run this? I'm not going to tell you what to do, but I'm going to say, no, no, you probably shouldn't run this. If you need a file system visualizer, there are modern solutions that exist that run considerably faster and don't seg fault while I'm trying to record a video and let you change their colors without doing a seg fault. But I love to explore some of these weird and wacky applications that exist in the past. Sure, it's great that a lot of applications now have good UIs and are easy to use, but We've lost some of the flair that exists with software, and I can totally understand the appeal for having the 90s themed desktops. There's something to that. So that's going to be it for me, and let me know your thoughts on this application in the comment section down below. I'm not going to ask you if you're going to use it, because if you say yes, I think you need to seek some help. 
But anyway, maybe you will say yes. And if you like this video, I'm going to go and like the video. If you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the Pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over T available basically anywhere. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robinson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.